see, good boy. See, good boy. <laughs> good boy, right? Say, good boy.
thanks to the help of Mike McClellan in our forestry department, I want you to all know this didn't happen by accident. We built this library around these trees. We human beings had enough intelligence and enough wisdom from our librarian friends and from our foresters to say, you know what? Sometimes a tree is just as important as a library or a building. And we have protected these trees that are about 50 years old so that the kids coming here today will have a 50-year-old tree to sit under. And we have a reading garden right behind us here. You'll be able to take your books outside with a cup of uh, juice or a bottle of water and read your book out in a reading garden outdoors. So I, I think it's something very special that we did. You see this library, we have a green roof. We have what we call bird-friendly windows, so that the beautiful birds that we're protecting, you may see some red hawks flying around here. They nest in the trees behind us, and they nest in the trees in the Frank Fulmer Woodlot that we have protected as public parkland forever for future generations. So we have created something here that will transform this little grassy knoll, as we call it. I'm sure many of you remember what used to be here. It was just a front lawn on a 45 degree angle, the grassy knoll that we have called it. What is here now is a new living room for each and every one of you. So for those of you today who've come from the condos, one gentleman said to me, I live on the 14th floor at that condo. There he is right there, wait, wave. He has a new library and a new living room to come to. The condos are sometimes a little small, so this is where you're going to come and enjoy and watch TV, read your magazines, use the 3D printer in the side room, and of course, when there's cricket, when there's hockey, basketball, football, baseball, uh, women's lacrosse, whatever sport, Pan Am, para Pan Am, there's a big screen TV here that you're all welcome to come and use. So folks, I just want to say thank you and I want to give one final round of applause to these very special people that are here with me to, who made sure that we invested millions of dollars to make sure you have one of the best libraries in all of the city of Toronto. So thank you very much for coming. Enjoy. And make sure you say hello to everybody. so much, Councillor, for all of your support over the years as well. And now I'd like to introduce a very special young man, Randall Edgett. Randall is a Scarborough resident and a community leader, and also a spoken word entertainer and archivist. He uses the power of words to inspire people and use their stories and art to help create community through entertainment. He's also one of the four coaches mentoring young emerging spoken word artists in the Poetry Saved Our Lives project, a Toronto 2015 Pan Am legacy project presented in partnership with Toronto Public Library and the City of Toronto. Randall, it's my pleasure to invite you to share some of your poetry with us today. Randall. So um, 
I've been through some hardships, but I was able to use literacy, to use poetry as a way of really expressing who I am and being able to kind of let go of the traumas or the pain that I've gone through. Right? So before I get into it, I just want to create a, a welcoming space for us to do this. I truly really believe that each and every single person, we are excellent simply because we are capable. Whatever you put your mind to, it's all up to you, right? So it's a two-part, two-step process. If you could turn to the person to your left and say you are excellent, then to the person to your right and say because you are capable. Please go for it. So you are excellent. You are excellent. And you are capable. Thank you. So, um, we're going to get into my poem. My poem is called The Ex Criminal. This has to do with my experiences growing up in Scarborough and how I was able to use literacy to overcome these problems and really using poetry. So, this whole poem is about me being able to use poetry to overcome the struggles that I've been through. Alright? By the way, if, you like, if, you're, if you're into poetry, you understand poetry, you can snap. By the way, you can snap if you like what you hear. Hey. <laughs> cold. Cold, dark nights where I was nowhere to be found. Leaving my loving mother worried, asking herself, how? See, in 2003, huh, I was a thief for Halloween. Stealing, causing a commotion, creating a scene. Throwing rocks at the innocent, laughing back at those times of reminisce. That night, see, I made a big mistake. See, the cops pulled up and I, I could have run away, but I chose not to. That choice left me in a cell overnight singing the blues. Left in there for hours till my father picked me up. Sitting in that passenger seat, well, huh, it left us both feeling distraught. When we got home, we fought verbally, and this all happened at the age of 12. I wasn't even 13. On another cold, brisk November night, see, I left myself in the front. See, early me and my boys caused mischief that night, assaulting another youth. See, I remember kicking him in the face with my boot. I got home later on to hear the police wanted me. Oh, shoot. You see, I knew what I did, but no way was I going back to the pen. So they wanted to see me the very next day. And after school, I, I took my precious time getting on the subway. I, I walked through those doors as nervous as a thief. There were thoughts going through my head and times I couldn't breathe until I was arrested. Something I would never foresee. See, the officer sat me in a cell and for the next 12 hours I went through hell. I cried, I cried, I tried to get to help until I realized there was no one left. And within that cell, I lost myself. I stayed in that cold, lonely cell until later on the next day. I was transported downtown in the early morning. I had my picture and my fingerprints taken and before my eyes, my life was sore. I stayed handcuffed until 4 in the morning, so it was hard to overcome the fear. I felt my life and self-esteem dripping in my tears. See, I made a few peers and found out for them it was the end. Some were in there for two, three years, some even ten. I was so surprised. I remember closing my eyes only to wake up to a puddle of my very own eyes. So after that, I promised myself there would be no more lies. So I, I tried and I and I tried and I and I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried, but I still never realized that my life was a prize. See, as long as the spirit is inside, it doesn't matter how big it sucks. So I write to you today to tell you about my experience, to free my mind from inheritance. See, if I could change my life, there'd be no replacement. I had court dates like every day, and although they were brief, it was one step closer to removing my mother's grief. So she prayed and 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 prayed until her son was free, walking and grimacing on both arthritic knees. After this experience, I widened my eyes and I was filled with sorrow, just trying and trying and trying trying and doing and doing and doing and doing to live a better tomorrow. So I just wanted to say, I wrote that poem because literacy has been an opportunity for me to, to really express who I am. And having this, 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 this uh, branch here in Scarborough, I'm really going to be taking advantage of it and all the young people that I work with. So I want to thank you guys for listening to my poem and just, just being able to hear like poetry really saved my life. And uh, if any of you are free on Friday, that we're going to be celebrating what we've been doing with, with the young people with the eight branches. It's going to be happening at the reference library at the Blue Man Apple Salon. So if you're available at 6 p.m. this Friday, it's a free event. You get to hear some of the most talented people and hear, just like myself, how poetry saved my life. All right? So thank you. and such a moving story. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you a two-minute video that we filmed to capture the reaction of the community and friends about the branch opening. So please have a look. Right the library for the opening of their 100 branch. I want to thank all the Toronto Public Library staff that were involved in this project from day one and all of the residents that and what they want to see in this branch to make it a success. Thank you very much. What's really important about the public library, I think, is that we're not just 
one institution. We're a hundred different institutions across the city. And uh, we reach people where they live, we serve people where they live, and I think that's really important.
already 